Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Feats of Strength. This week, I'm taking the 16-inch kids bike and making my favorite freak bike design ever. This week, we're going to take this 16-inch Haro BMX bike and turn it into a freak bike that I've called the Badonkadonk. The Badonkadonk started off by taking a 16-inch kid's bike and putting it on 700C wheels, named after the Southern Donk style of car and the booty shake and dance you inevitably do when you step out of the saddle to pedal it up a hill. The first time I made one of these bikes was back in 2006, 2007, when I was living in Seattle. And I've made a couple more since because it's so much fun. So we'll be taking this bike, removing the rear end, giving it a new front fork, and putting some big rims on it. While my original donk was a lot of fun, I have learned a lot since then, but I think it's time to recreate this design and up my game. So first things first, let's tear down this bike and get it ready to chop up. I am gonna keep most of these parts that I'm taking off. What doesn't go back on the bike, I'll use for a future project, like these 16 inch rims. Gotta replace a couple of missing parts on this whole bike. Let's throw in a nice Ergon saddle and uh, what the heck, a pretty sweet Odyssey BMX stem. This thing's got a lot of loose parts, so we'll just drop it in this bag for now. Now the last time I did this bike, I extended the fork. This time we're using a complete 700C fork, straight tubes, solid construction, and clearance for some larger tires. I am gonna replace the rear triangle on this bike this one's bent, so I'm not too worried about cutting it off. What we do need is some chain stays and seat stays off of another donor bike. I've got these off of a long tail cargo bike and they're gonna work great. Now I need to grab some wheels for this. I happen to have the original donk wheels. They're living on my commuter bike right now. Time to reappropriate them and put them back on a donk. These are uh, old Mavic Caesarium Elites. At some point, I decided to spray paint them, gave them the token colored spoke. Uh, yeah, they're gonna be perfect. All right, let's get this frame cut up using one of my favorite tools in the shop, the Porta Band. It's a lot quieter, cleaner, smoother than using a cutoff wheel. It's pretty stinking satisfying. Next, I'm gonna cut off the original dropouts from these chain stays. I was thinking about keeping them. I gave it a lot of consideration. Maybe this time around, I'd want this donk to be a, uh, a geared bike. But you know, there's just something good about having a good old single speed. So let's throw some track fork ends on it. Just do a little bit of cleanup of the frame here. Get rid of all the excess metal and paint. Time for some layout. For a lot of freak bike builds, I love just using my fabrication table. Get the axle position marked out and just to help me visualize, trace the outside of the wheel too. Using an angle finder like this one, I'll mark the angle of the head tube. Before I cut everything up, this bike used a 68 degree head tube. So I can set this to that and then transfer it over to the table. I do a lot of the mock-up using the straight edge of the front of the table. I can use the angle on the edge of the table, transfer the line using a square, and mark some of the key points on the fork. Then line up the frame, transfer that over to the table too. A little bit of talc or chalk works fine for marking on the table. I can always erase it later, or scrub it out and move the lines. First, I'm gonna set up the 
track fork ends and get those attached to the chain stays. So I've just thrown a dummy hub into the track fork ends. The dummy hub happens to be a, an old power tap hub. Don't ask, it's just what I had laying around. I figured out the bottom bracket drop, the difference between the rear axle and the bottom bracket of the bike. Now using these two 3x3 three three aluminum blocks, I'll add an extra inch and an eighth to the top. That gives me the difference between the rear axle and the bottom bracket. Well, it's tough to see on the table, but I have also scribed a center line. I'm just going to check and make sure that everything is lined up front to back. You'll also notice that I'm leaving the bridge between the two braces intact. That just helps keep everything lined up while I'm modifying it. Next, I can transfer this over to our layout on the table. Here, I'm just figuring out where to cut the front part of the stays so they can be welded onto the bottom bracket. Once I've marked the lines, I can cut off the end of these chain stays. I can cope the ends with a grinder so they fit perfectly around the bottom bracket shell. A lot of this is just taking your time, a little bit at a time, grinding it down, and once you think it's close, take it over to the frame and double check your measurements. Come back, grind off a little bit more. All right, obviously things got a little bit carried away between the last cut. I'll do my best to explain. I've got the bottom bracket drop set up. I have squared up the rear axle to the front edge of the table. The aluminum tube is squared up to the front edge of the table as well. And I know that the upright aluminum tube is square to the top of the table. Now the last thing to check is to make sure that the bottom bracket is flush with the tubes. That way the frame is perfectly vertical. And, uh, oops, it's totally not. Let me just fix that real quick. There we go, that's better. It's evenly touching the aluminum on both sides. I know that it is flat and square to the table. I also got this magnetic angle finder up here on the head tube. It just helps me check the degrees. Again, pretty handy. Stick it onto the front, make sure we're at 68. Everything looks good. Let's tack it in place. Yep, I think it's looking good for the night. I'm gonna wrap up, come back tomorrow, and I will get the seat stays welded into place. First thing this morning, I decided to check the overall frame alignment. And a really easy way to do that is to get yourself a straight edge like this here level. Place one side of the level against the head tube, the other on the seat tube, and see where your dropout lines up. Check to the other side, should be even on both sides. This does look good right now, but first thing this morning, I noticed everything was out by about a quarter of an inch. I decided I would weld this side of this chain stay and the inside of this chain stay in hopes that the heat would pull it into alignment. You know what? It worked. I'm stoked. I also took the time to cut off a little bit extra of the frame here, weld it on a flat disc, and now I've got the seat stays ready to weld into place. Now, because everything is pretty well aligned and locked into place, leaving the rear hub in just to make sure nothing moves around, I'm gonna go ahead and weld the dropouts in place and get most of the rest of the seams stitched up while I'm at it. Now, time to get this bridge cut out. We will throw in a couple of extra supports here, top and bottom, just to help stiffen up the frame. Just want to check tire clearance, so I'm going to throw the back wheel in and put it all the way forward in the dropouts. Plenty of space on either side and plenty of space top to bottom. I can't help myself. At this part in the build, I might as well throw the fork into the frame and see how it's coming along. I'm definitely liking the look of it. All right, got those cross braces dropped in now as well. I am really happy with the progress. 
I did a quick buildup of the bike just to make sure everything fits, nothing's rubbing, nothing's out of line. I know I skipped most of that, but when I was getting ready to do the build, I realized I don't have any brakes for the bike. I dug through all my parts bins, couldn't track anything down. So we're gonna come back next week, add a coat of paint, get some brakes put on it. In the meantime, I can drop in a chain tensioner by Surly. I really hate having a single speed bike with a quick release rear axle. It's way too easy to pull it forward in the dropouts. And it's got an extra feature. Those guys are so smart. All right, here's the progress so far. I'm really pumped with this. If you're asking yourself why anybody would design and build a bike like this, uh, it's probably not the channel for you. I just like the look of it. Sometimes it's all right to make a bike just because you want to see how it looks. Might turn out to be pretty fun to ride too. Anyway, we'll come back next week, add some brakes, get it painted, get this bike finished. In the meantime, enjoy some beauty shots. Before you guys go, I did want to mention I have set up a Patreon page. It's Patreon slash Feats of Strength. Click the link below and help keep the content coming. Thanks for your support. See you next week.